Hello again, this is John Small and I'm continuing my study on the false the false doctrine and false teachings and religion of Calvinism. I was talking the first part I was talking about predestination. I'm going to finish that up and I'm going to start here at Luke at I mean at Hebrews ten, verse ten. By the which we will by the which will well let me just go up a few verses. Hebrews 10, verse 8, Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are, of, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. How about that one? We were all set... God, the God offered His self. God offered His Son. Jesus Christ willingly offered His own body and offered His blood and sacrifice <coughs> for the for all, not for the elect, for all. Like I said before, everybody in the world could be the elect if they all would just humble themselves, let go of their rebellion and their pride, and get saved. The whole world could be elect. Like I said, the Bible I've already given you verses that says, "For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved." And telling, and then Jesus telling the disciples and the, or the apostles that that which become the apostles told them to go preach to all nations, preach the preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say preach the gospel to the to every elect person because don't preach everybody else because they won't get saved no way because I chose him not to be saved. It says preach the gospel to every creature. What part of that does the the you Calvinists not get, not understand? What part of that do you not understand? What it is, is it destroys your stupid theology, and you don't like that. And that makes you upset, because you come to believe a bunch of garbage, and you, and you don't like that. You don't like that somebody's exposing your lies. It makes you feel bad, so you want to get mad and just rebuke it somehow, and you really, you can't. The last one I'm going to give is First Peter, I mean, not, it's Second Peter. <coughs> Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That includes everybody right there. God is not willing that any should perish. He didn't say he's God is not willing that the elect should perish, but that the elect should come to repentance. He doesn't say anything about the elect, it says that everybody. It says He God is saying that He He's not willing that now that doesn't mean that He won't put you in hell, but it means that he's not wanting to. He doesn't want to put you in hell, but if you but if you get but if you won't repent and you've gone to reject God, he's going to. He's gonna have no choice. He's gonna say, I've been dealing with you, I've been long suffering you, you will not repent, fine. If that's what you want, I'll put you in hell. And that's what you want. Because that's what you want if you don't want to get saved and you constantly rebel against it. What else do you think you want? You want you just you want to die and go to hell and you don't care. But God says here, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All is, is it includes everybody, and it, does, and it doesn't leave out anyone. And it, and it includes everybody. Everybody that's ever lived, every man and woman or child or whatever that's ever lived on the face of this earth, that includes them all. God's not willing that anybody that's ever exists on earth to perish, but but wants them all to come to repentance. All right. All right, the next verse, well, the next, uh, the next, the next uh, set uh, subject that the Calvinists teach, which is a false doctrine, is limited atonement, which basically is saying that some people that God did not die for everybody. It's basically saying that Jesus didn't die on the cross for everybody, but the elect. It, it kind of ties in with predestination. <coughs> It kind of, you know, it ties in with predestination, with uh, the uh, people, that, with the Calvinists kind of say that, well, you know, there's only the elect, there's ones that go there, God decided that we're going to go to hell before the foundation of the world. He uh, chose them to go to hell before they even were born, so they have no hope they can save when they're, as soon as they're born, they have no hope of salvation. They're, it's like they're born reprobates, really. But then there's the elect, God chose for them to be saved and for them to go to heaven. Which is not true. That's what limited atonement. It kind of goes. It ties in in saying he only died for the elect. He didn't die for everybody. He just died for the elect. But these some of the verses I just gave you for predestination rebuke that. 
for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sounds like God died for everybody there. And then again, I told you before, why would God tell you, why would God, why would Jesus Christ say, preach the gospel to every creature and to preach, and my name, and my gospel should be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem? Why would God say that? Why would Jesus Christ say that if he did die for everybody? You know, see, if you look, listen to how stupid your theology is. Just a few verses can rebuke a whole teaching that they have. One verse. Just a few verses I've given you rebuke it. And just shut it down. They'll still believe it. I know that may be your opinion, but that's not... It's, like, it's not my opinion. It's, not a, it's what the Bible says. That's what it's not my opinion. It's, it doesn't say, this is the... This is a my. This is John Swallow's opinion to Calvinism. No, it's not my opinion to Calvinism. It's what the Bible says. Boy, Hebrews ten ten. I've already read, but that also goes with it again. Hebrews ten ten. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Bear the, was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now some might say, well, see, that didn't say everybody. This said many. Well, the whole world has many people. That many there, he's talking about everybody because he's not going to say, he didn't say, if God was saying, I only die for a few people, he would have said, "I once come to bear the sins of the of the elect, or sins of this these, this 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 group of people." He says, "Many." The word "many" is a lot of people. This is not just talking about a little group of. This is not just talking about maybe a couple hundred people or something. I was come to bear the sins of Israel. I, he said, "I come to bear the sins of, of many, a lot of people." This includes everybody. This word "many" includes everybody, the whole world. difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him unto all that call upon him not the elect that call upon him not just the few that call upon him it says all that call upon him it's basically saying anybody that calls upon him it's basically saying that there's a God gives opportunity God gives God gives a, like just the the very next verse talks about whosoever shall call upon him Lord shall be saved that's tied in with it it's basically saying God will hear and save anybody that calls upon Him and accepts the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, whoever it is, no matter who it is, if they are truly repentant, God will save them. There's no difference. Continue this in part three.